In this lesson, you'll learn what it takes to even make a triangle out of the three sides. We can't just assume that all three links, any three links would make a triangle. Um, there are certain situations that have to happen. And then the other thing that you'll learn today is the, the relationship between the angles and the sides and how things are placed um, within the triangle. So if you go through this activity using either snap sticks or you go into GeoGebra, um, you'll find that um, there are certain requirements that have to be met in order for three links, three side links to make a triangle. So if we just, we found that maybe um, these three different measurements, there are three, three, these three different groups of links did make triangles. And then we have these other three here where they didn't. So these did, and then the ones in the bottom table did not make a triangle. So let's look at what they have in common then. Um, if you look at the ones that will make a triangle, I put them in order from least to greatest. Notice that the sum of the two short ones, two plus three, is bigger than four. Three plus three is bigger than five. Four plus seven is bigger than 10. And so what happens is, is if we have a length of two and a length of three and a length of four, then those three links, imagine if you had a board that was um, a length of four and then you nailed a two foot board and a three foot board on either end and you hinged them in, then when you fold those in, these two boards here are going to hit each other and they're going to form a triangle. Whereas if you look at these other ones, three, five, and 12, say I take that longest board that's 12 and I nail a three foot board down here and a five foot board down here, then when I swing those boards down, that's only eight foot worth of board. And so it's going to leave me with four feet worth of space that's not going to make a triangle. Those two boards are not gonna hinge down and hit each other. The same thing. So three plus five is less than 12. Two plus two is less than seven. And this special case, three plus four is equal to seven because what happens there is if I have a seven foot board and say I take a three foot board and a four foot board and then I close them down, what's gonna happen is I've got that seven foot board and then my three foot board and my four foot board are going to close down all nice and snug and be the exact same length. So they're not going to form a triangle. So what has to happen is that the sum of the two short links have to be greater than the third side. So that's what it takes to be a triangle, is that the sum of the two short sides, sorry about that, has to be greater than the third length. So let's decide whether the following links form a triangle. Now be careful, don't get in the habit of thinking that it's always gonna be the first two have to be bigger than the third. It has to be the two short sides, okay? So four and seven and 11. Since four and seven are the smallest, we wanna test it. Is four plus seven greater than 11? The answer is no, it's equal to 11. It has to be greater than, not equal to, just greater than. You might make a note over there, not greater than or equal to, okay? So then let's test this one. Now notice this one's not written in order, so we need our two short sides. So two plus five, two plus five has to be bigger than nine. So two plus five is seven, which is not bigger than nine. So these will not form a triangle. So let's look at this next one. 10 plus 14, is that bigger than 15? 24 is bigger than 15, so the answer is yes. These three links will form a triangle. And then six and eight are my short links, so six plus eight, is that bigger than 10? 14 is bigger than 10, so yes, it does form a triangle. Now, to determine, so what if I give you two links and I want to know then what are all the possibilities of measurements that, could, um, that I could use? So if I have five and nine, so what you're gonna do is you have to consider, okay, what if five and nine are your two short sides? Well, then they have to be bigger than the sum of them. So five plus nine is 14. So the third side would have to be bigger than 14. Now, what if it's not? What if, the, um, what if the, the other side is not the longest side? Well, if you take those and subtract them, nine minus five is four. So what that tells you then is anywhere between four and 14 would work. So let's just do a quick test. 
What if it was four, five, and nine? <clears throat> well, that wouldn't work. So, but that's gonna tell us something about how we write this inequality. How about five, five, and nine? <clears throat> so this is the number that I'm changing right now. I'm kind of guessing. If, you, if all else fails, you can just start picking numbers and guess. Well, that one works. So you could have five, five, and nine. What about six, five, and nine? Well, that would work. 11 is bigger than nine. Um, seven, five, and nine. Well, that's 12, which is bigger than nine. Eight, five, and nine. That's 13. Nine, five, and nine. That's 14. So that works. Nine and five is 14, which is bigger than nine. 10, five, and nine. Okay, so now you've got to switch, right? Because now these two, your five and nine, are your smallest ones. So those are 14 bigger than 10. That works. 11, 5, and 9 it works. 12, 5, and 9 works. 13, 5, and 9 works. 14, 5, and 9 does not work anymore because 5 plus 9 is 14, and 14 equals 14. So you can do that, but you don't want to do that for every problem. So the easiest thing to do is add the numbers together, and that's going to be your big side. Subtract the numbers from each other, and that's gonna be your small side. And so then here's how you write the inequality. So my numbers, my lengths of my boards, if you will, have to range from four to 14. And my numbers need to be in the middle. So if you will always do it like this, then it will always work the same way. You put your lower number on the left-hand side, your bigger number on the right-hand side, and then you can always use less thans. <clears throat> not or equal to's, because remember when it was equal to, it didn't work. My four and my 14 didn't work when I plugged them in, and I did what I know about the sum of the two short has to be longer than the third, okay? And so then that's your interval. So the length of board that I would have to buy would have to be between four feet and 14 feet. Any shorter or any longer would not create a triangle. So if we look at this one, if we add 10 plus six, that gives me 16, that's gonna be my high side. If I subtract 10 minus six, that gives me four, that's gonna give me my low side. And then all of my boards have to be in the middle between four and 14, bigger than four, but smaller than 16. Okay, and so you always use less thans, not or equal to's. Don't forget, no or equal to's. Okay, no or equal to's, just less thans. So that's the sum that's called the triangle inequality theorem, and that's how you can determine what three side lengths make a triangle. So now let's look at some relationships in these triangles. So I have three triangles here, and what we wanna do is just kinda look. What do you notice about the location of the shortest side relative to the smallest angle? So here is my, sh my smallest angle, and if I look, here is my shortest side. Notice that it is across. Then let me show you this, okay? Now in this case, these two are equal to each other. Well, it's interesting though, because if you notice, the sides that are across from those are also equal. So when the angles are equal, the sides that are across from them are equal. When the, when, and then we have the smallest side is across from the smallest angle. Let's look and see if that's always true. My smallest angle is right here at 24, and the side that's across from it, that's not forming the angle, is six. Let's look at um, this medium angle. Here's my medium angle, 59 degrees, and then my medium length side is 13. It's in between six and 15. I notice those are across from each other. And then I have this big angle, this obtuse angle, 97 degrees, and the longest side is 15. So notice that in every single one of these cases, the side and the angle matched each other that went together. So basically then what we notice is that our short side is across from or opposite the smallest angle. And then what we also notice then, remember your medium side was across from your medium angle and your large side was across from your long angle or your large angle. And so then we know that our long side is 
opposite or across from the largest angle. And that makes sense because the angle has to open up wide. You have to draw a longer line to attach the ends of them. So it says order the angles in each triangle from smallest to largest. So in our order to find the smallest angle, we need the shortest side. So my shortest side is nine, which means that angle Q has to be my smallest angle. And then after that, I have my uh, medium length, which is 14, which goes with S. So S has to be then my, my medium length. And then my longest side is 15, which is across from R or formed by R. And so angle R then has to be the biggest. So what if we don't have a triangle? That's okay, we can draw one. So let's just draw one. It can be any triangle, it doesn't matter Y, X, W. I always think it's easier to look at it with a triangle than it is to look at all these letters. It gets confusing with all the letters, so it's easier if you just draw a picture. Just draw any random triangle, and then let's label it. X, W is eight, Y, W is 10, and Y, X is 15. Okay, so now it's easy to see which angle is the smallest angle because the smallest angle has to be across from the shortest side. So the shortest side is eight, and so Y has to be the opposite. Now notice, X and W touch, right? There are the endpoints of that shortest side. So you have to use the third angle, that third vertex. So angle Y then is my smallest angle. And if you need to find your biggest angle next, 15 is your biggest side. So that means, and it has endpoints of X and Y, so that means W then has to be your longest. Sometimes it's easier to find your short and your long and then pick the one that's left in the middle, which means that angle X has to be in the middle. So we can tell that the smallest angle is across from the shortest side and the largest angle is across from the longest side. So now let's work that from a different direction. Order the sides of each triangle from the shortest to the longest. So in order to determine which one is the, the, short, the shortest side, we need to find the smallest angle. So the smallest angle of the three is this 30 degrees and the ends of that 30 degree angle are at W and V. They extend out and they hit at W and V, which means that WV is my smallest or my shortest length. Then my next angle is this 70 degree angle. It is across from WX. So WX is my medium length. And then VX is my longest side because it's across from this 80 degree angle. And so it would be VX or XV, either one. Now, you might be missing those little angle symbols, but that's what should be there. Look at number six. In triangle DEF, D is 32 and E is 74. Well, it's hard for me to determine the side lengths and which one is the shortest and the longest when I don't have all three angles. That's okay. We know how to find them. So we've got D, E, F. D, E, and F. I know that D is 32, so I can label that. That's 32. E is 74, and we know if we reach way back um, into what we have learned before, we know that triangles add up to 180. So 180 minus 74 minus 32, or you can add them up and subtract from 180, you find out that um, angle F is also 74. So in this case, notice if I have two angles the same, that means I'm gonna have two sides are the same. So my shortest side is my, across from my smallest angle. Well, here's my 32 degree angle. So that means then that my shortest side has to be EF. And then my other two sides, ED and DF, they're going to be the same length because then this triangle has to be an isosceles triangle. It has two side lengths that are the same. It makes sense if the two angles are the same length, then the sides that are across from them would have to be the same length also. So now what we know from that is that the short side is across from the small angle and the long side is across from the largest angle. You can imagine that you have that, um, that angle open up. So you're gonna have from end to end, you're gonna